From Detroit to the nations, you are listening to the world's number one Christian station, Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Hi, this is Evangelist Tammy Laster, and coming up next is my show, Not On My Watch, right here on Worship Center Radio. You are tuned in right now to Worship Center Radio, Detroit's number one station for the gospel. Amen. And definitely Detroit's uh, platform of champions. I'm glad you all are tuned in on tonight. Um, the word or the teaching that I have tonight will be on the power of prophecy in your mouth. Again, the power of prophecy in your mouth. But before we begin to get into tonight's teaching, let's have a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. We acknowledge that you are God and God all alone. We acknowledge that there is no other God beside thee. You are the true and living God. And we say thank you, Father. We thank you for choosing us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Father, we thank you that as your chosen priesthood, your chosen vessels, Father, we thank you that we are of a royal priesthood. And Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is our constant guide, our constant comforter. Father, we thank you and we will not neglect the presence of your spirit, Lord God. Father, we thank you and we praise you. For allowing us to see another day. Because it is by your power and your power alone. That you have allowed us to awake on today. Father we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Father we thank you oh God. That there is power in the blood. And the blood works constantly on our behalves Father. We thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross for us. Because it is through him, Father, that we have redemption. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for every listener that is tuned in on tonight. Father, I pray, so, pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that they will have your peace, which is a peace that surpasses all understanding, no matter what they're going through, Father. Father, I pray that they will experience your peace like never before. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name, O oh God, for divine protection for each and every person that is tuned in on tonight, Father. There's so much going on in, in the world today, so much evil, so, so much turmoil, but Father, I pray, oh God, that the angelic host of the heavenlies, Father, will constantly protect your children, oh God. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Tonight, um, as I said, the Teaching is going to be on the power of prophecy in your mouth. We all at some point in our lives go through something. Uh, we, we, we experience sufferings. We experience storms. We experience mountains. We experience giants. And because we are... If, if you are a child of God, you will experience those things. And, but I want you to know that even in experiencing those things in those times of trouble and, you know, what have you, you must know that God 
has given you authority and the ability to speak to situations and circumstances that you encounter. God has the power. Let me just say the power is in your mouth. Your words are powerful. So you have to be careful what you speak when you're going through. Uh, let's not be like the children of Israel. A two week journey took them four years because of their mumbling and their complaining and, and, you know, uh, trying to figure out why they were going through what they're going through. And instead of complaining, I mean, instead of uh, worshiping the Lord and thanking the Lord, they constantly complain. So you must know that your complaining will not cause you to progress or get over what you're going through. Let me just say, um, you must speak what the what the lord says and you that that way the reason i'm saying that is you must know what the word of god says when you're going through and i can tell you this um god does not like a complainer he he does not want to hear your complaints he wants worship him when you're going through worship him when you're going through and and i'm gonna say either your silence or your complaining will determine how long you will go through what you're going through. Amen. You know, we must recognize that when I say, you know, the word is whatever you speak is so powerful. In Genesis, when God formed the, the heavens and the earth, it says he spoke and it was. That's that's powerful. And and, and we're going to go to Matthew chapter eight tonight where, where Jesus spoke to the storm. Jesus spoke to the storm and it calmed. And and, and in uh, Mark eleven twenty three it says that we even have the ability to speak to mountains and they be removed. So you must know that when you're going through something, you have the power and the ability to speak to your situation. Amen. Let's look at. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 8, beginning at verse 23. Actually, I'm going to go 23 through 26. And I'm going to read um, the New Living Translation. And it says, verse 23, Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Verse 24, Suddenly... A fierce storm struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. Verse 25, the disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to go down or we're going down. Verse 26, Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up, he rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. Jesus didn't, he didn't get all uh, flustered and frustrated. He didn't spaz out. He, he got up, he rebuked, he rebuked it, and then there was a calm. And a lot of times when we're going through things, we take our eyes off Jesus. We take our, we, and we begin to focus more on the situation and the circumstance that we're going through instead of fo focusing on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when you begin to just constant, see the enemy wants you to focus on what you're going through. He wants you to focus on, you know, whatever negative situation or circumstances that you're dealing with. And you must know also he, he distracts you and he wants your focus because he wants to discourage you and keep you ineffective in every area of your life. And, and see, sometimes we must understand that a lot of uh, uh, the uh, persecutions, the storms and all that that we go through, they're, they're a part of the process. They're a part of the process for our lives in order for us to reach our, our destiny where God is taking us. And, and uh, the Bible says... There's a scripture that says, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is too small. Let me say that again. If you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is too small. Well, when you're going through something, how many of you tuck tail and run? You start crying. You start, you pick up the phone and you're calling everybody and, and telling everybody what you're going through instead of 
going to the word of God instead of getting in the presence of God and get, getting that peace and that calm that uh, worship brings when you're going through something. But Jesus, it says Jesus spoke to the storm. He spoke to the winds and the waves, and then there was a storm. There, there is power in what you speak when you're going through a storm. Amen? And like I said, the enemy wants to discourage you and keep you ineffective in every area of your life because he knows that you are a threat to the kingdom of God. So that's why he oh, he bombards you with stuff. He, he throws stuff at you. The, it, re, what they say, the, the refrigerator, the kitchen sink, he throws the whole kitchen at you. Sometimes the living room, the bedroom, all that. And only to keep you distracted and to take your mind off of speaking those things that be not as though they were and when you're you're bombarded with things like that your faith decreases because you're so focused on what you're going through and the bible says that we are to walk by faith and not by sight we are not to concentrate on the things that we're going through we're not to let those things overwhelm us the bible says that we will suffer we will go through but we must understand that you know we, we will go through these things and it's a part of the process and, and, you know, getting us to the, the next level. The Bible says we go from faith to faith to glory to glory. So and every time you go from faith to faith and glory to glory, you're going to encounter demonic activity. You're going to encounter negative situations. You're going to encounter opposition, but you must know that the, what you're looking at and what you're going through is only temporary. It's, it's not your final destination. It's not the finality of where God is taking you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to enlighten you today that you, you can speak. Whatever you speak, it shall manifest. The power is in what you say. The power is in what you say. And you, and you must know that Every victory in your life is preceded uh, be, uh, before a storm. Uh, be, yeah, every victory in your life is preceded by a storm or a battle. Let me say that again. Every victory in your life is preceded by a storm or a battle. You When, when it, it was raining all day today, it rained yesterday, and, and I love the rain. And, and I like walking in the rain. I like running in the rain. But it, it's something about after the rain, there's a refreshing. The air is clean. You know, uh, it, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. So... Uh, and I hear people say all the time, oh, I hate when it rains. I love when it rains because I know what's coming after the rain. And, and even when it storms, it, you know, sometimes you see the rainbows and the clouds are beautiful. The, and, and the air, like I said, the air is clear. So even while it's raining, don't focus on the fact that it's raining, but think about what comes after the rain. Amen. And, and when it rains, it washes away uh, debris. It, it cleans the air. So that this is, you got to change the way you think when you're going through uh, things also. Amen. And you must know that every victory that you will get, it will not come without a fight. Every victory that you get will not come without a fight. Victories do not come without bloodshed. You must know that in, in every storm, every battle, every negative opposition that you face, there's going to be some bloodshed. There's going to be some pain because you're on your way to victory. Amen. But you must, while you're going through, even though the pain comes, the bloodshed comes, even while you're going through it, you must say, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. If you're going through something in your body, that's a storm. You know, sp begin to speak to your body. Begin to speak uh, healing to your body. And when you begin to speak over yourself the word of the Lord, the Bible says that the word of God will not return void, but it will go out and accomplish that which it is set to do. Amen. So you must speak the word of the Lord. You must say what God has said when you're going through something. And when you say what God has said, it is, it is as if God is speaking it to himself. Why? Because you have the spirit of the Lord on the inside of you. And when you speak and declare what God has said, the spirit of the Lord is, is speaking on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You must know that. You can prophesy 
to your storm. You can prophesy to every situation and every circumstance you're going through. Now, not everybody has the calling of a prophet on their life, but you can prophesy. When you speak and declare the divine word of the Lord, you are prophesying. Amen? Amen? And that word prophecy, it, it means the inspired declaration of divine will and purpose. Let me say that again. The word prophecy, it means the, the inspired declaration of divine will and purpose. When you begin to prophesy to your situation, the spirit of the Lord is speaking through you divinely to that situation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can prophesy in the midst of whatever battle you're going through, whatever battle that you're dealing with. You, you know, some of you have been battling for years, the same situation, dealing with people that's been uh, like a thorn in your flesh for years. And you've been battling with individuals and it's because you're not speaking. You're not speaking to that situation. Amen. You speak to that situation. Speak to it. To speak to it. You know, if we can speak to demons and they obey because God has given us authority, you can speak to a situation. You can speak to a situation. Amen. You can prophesy to those giants that you face. You can prophesy to those giants that you face. When David went up against Goliath, he said he had five smooth stones. He had the word of the Lord. And, and, he, and he said, I come to you. In the word of the Lord, with the word of the Lord. David knew that if he if he spoke the word of the Lord, that he would win that battle. Amen. And it wasn't the stones that killed Goliath. Amen. Because if you read the, the passage, the, the stones knocked him down, knocked him out cold. But he went back with a sword and he made sure that he killed the enemy amen he he took his head off amen he t and you can take the enemy's head off you can annihilate him with the word of the lord amen with the word of the lord and let me just say don't go into any battle in your own strength don't go into any battle in your own strength because you, you are not fighting against flesh and blood. And when you try to fight in your own flesh, you, you will lose. You will lose because you, you are not dealing with uh, the flesh. You are dealing with principalities and powers, in, you know, in, in the dark world. So you must not go in your own flesh thinking you're going to uh, win against the enemy when he's battling and raging war against you. Amen. Let, let, let me just use an example. I was watching the basketball game the other day, and, and it came to me. Every player, they are suited up for that game. They, they, they are suited up they, with, with the proper attire to play basketball. They don't show up at the game on the court wearing a suit and dress shoes. Amen. They, they, they would be uncomfortable trying to play that game. And they go, they go suited up. And, and when they go in there, I'm sure that they have the mindset of a winner, the mindset of a champion. They go in there with the attitude that I'm going to win this game. Amen. They are properly suited up. So when we are dealing with the enemy and going through things, we must be suited up. We must be dressed to kill. What do I mean by that? You must have on the full armor of God, according to Ephesians chapter 6. You must have on the full armor of God, according to Ephesians chapter 6. And what is that armor? What is that armor? It's the girdle of truth. The girdle of truth. We must be, when we're going through something uh, or dealing with people in situations and circumstances, we must gird ourselves with the truth. What is the truth? The truth is the word of God. Amen. We must be truthful and we must be transparent when we're going through something. You know, and what, the, what happens is when you're going through something, the enemy likes for you to become isolated and not talk about it and not share with people that you know uh, truly have your back. You know, the Bible says that one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 in flight. So you must know that when you're going through something, you must have somebody that you know that will get on their face with you, that will declare the word of the Lord, and that will pray the word of the Lord. Amen. Another part of that army is the 
Armor is the breastplate of righteousness. That breastplate of righteousness protects your heart when you're going into battle. So you that must be a part of the gear that you put on. That breastplate of righteousness. Amen. It says your shoes are shot with the pre preparation of the gospel. You must be armed with the word of God. Amen. You must have the shield of faith. That fe that shield protects the entire body. And I was looking, uh, studying over the weekend and looking at the armor that they, the Roman soldiers wore back in biblical times, they, they protected their whole body with this armor. And the shield of faith protects the entire body, but the shield of faith, amen, is the word of the Lord as well. It says you take the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the adversary. It's your faith in the word of the Lord that quenches, that extinguishes, extinguishes and puts out, you know, when uh, it, it just kind of, it puts out what the enemy is is bringing to you and then the helmet of salvation it protects your mind it protects your head you must put on your armor put that helmet of salvation on you must know that you are a child of god that you are saved that you are redeemed and when you're going through a lot of times the enemy tries to convince you and make you think that you're not a child of God and because you did something wrong that you lost your salvation you must know you must have that helmet of salvation on you because it protects your mind and it protects your head amen and you must take the sword of the spirit now a lot of, at that uh which is the word of the Lord so you can look and see that the sword of the spirit the shield of faith the and and the girdle of truth they all pertain and it can be re related to the word of God. Amen. We must be dressed to kill when we're going through situations and circumstances. We must be dressed to kill before you go into battle. Amen. Amen. And, and a lot of times... When you're going through something, the enemy brings temptation to you. And and, and God had the book in the book of James it said God has made a way of escape for us, you know, when temptation comes. It's not temptation is not of God. God never tempts you. When you're going through something, sometimes you you want to give in. Uh, and say forget it and throw your hands up because the enemy will bring something that will entice you and let me just say this he never brings anything to you that you're not attracted to amen the enemy only tempts you with things that you are attracted to he he tempts you with weaknesses and see the enemy he's he studies you and he sends out his demonic forces because we know he can't be in in uh everywhere at one time but he sends out his demons and they they go out they look at you they study you they listen to what you're saying and they go back and report to satan what you're saying, what you're doing, oh, oh uh, she got a weakness of fornication. So when you're going through something and you and, and you you standing on the word of God, the enemy will bring temptation to you. You Somebody might come in your path, of, of women, I'm talking to you, a man might come in your path and, and you need money for diapers and milk for your children or you need money to pay your rent. And here comes a man that, that's fully loaded with money. And, and he wants you to sleep with him and fornicate with him. But in exchange, he'll, he'll give you the money for the diapers and the milk that you need or the money that you to pay your rent because you're going through and you and you you get to a point of desperation. Don't give in to temptation. God does not tempt you. It, you, have, you have to uh, speak to your situation. And I'm one to tell you from, from, uh, experience and testimony after testimony, when I've gone through something, I've, I've spoken to situation. I spoke, I spoke to circumstances and I, I'm going to share this testimony. I had a, a tumor in my body years ago that was the size of a football and I kept standing on the word of the Lord and they, they wanted to operate and they said if I didn't operate that you know the tumor would kill me but I, I stood on the word of the Lord I had about 10 10 healing scriptures that I professed over my body declared over my body daily and I was in church one evening in that Bible study and the bishop called out my condition and and 
I, I w went out, I, I was slain in the spirit, and God performed a miraculous surgery on my body. And when I got up, that tumor was removed. It was removed, and I had the medical uh, records to, that documented that I had this tumor and, and how dangerous it was. And that was about 20 years ago. God miraculously performed surgery on me and removed that tumor. Amen. And I have several testimonies like that that you know that I could uh share but I won't go into but I'm just letting you know that you could prophesy to your storm you could prophesy to your situations and circumstances and you could speak to mountains and they be removed and cast in the sea but you have to make sure that you don't have doubt in your heart when you begin to speak to the mountains that you are dealing with amen and you must not have any unforgiveness in your heart uh, that's Oh, God, Jesus, you, I'm going to say that again. You must not have any unforgiveness in your heart, and you must not have doubt in your heart. You must believe that when you speak, that it shall be. The Bible says that the word of the Lord goes out, and, and it, when you declare it, it goes out, and it performs. It establishes whatever you, you send it to. Amen? Amen. We must be dressed to kill. I'm going to say that again. You must be dressed to kill. Amen. We must put on that entire protective gear that God has provided for us. Amen. We are not we are totally protected from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet except one area. God showed me that except one area. And and the uh back in the biblical days, the Roman soldiers, when they had on the armor of God, it only protected their front. They didn't have the armor that protected their back. Amen. That so that that one area which there is no protection is the back. And I remember being in school, my dad used to tell us, if you ever got into a fight, don't turn your back on the enemy. Amen. And 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 I remember that he got uh, my dad would say, when you when you going up against somebody, never turn your back, never turn your turn your back, because when you turn your back, you give the enemy an opportunity to wound you in your unprotected area. Amen. He catches you off guard. So never turn your back. When you going through something, never turn your back to the enemy. What do I mean by never turn your back? When you, a, a way that you turn your back to the enemy so he can wound you when you're going through something, you start speaking negative. You start th saying things like, I've had enough. I'm giving up. I can't stand this anymore. I can't go through this anymore. Why am I going through this? I can't take anymore. When you begin to speak like that, you have turned your back to the enemy for him to wound you. You have given him an opportunity to wound you in a place that is not protected. Amen. Never turn your back on the enemy. Never turn your back on, on the enemy. Amen. Because when you do, you can be sure that he's going to take that opportunity to wound you. So don't turn your back on the enemy. And and like I said, my dad used to tell us before, if somebody messed with us in school, don't you turn your back on the enemy. And, and not only that, not only did we not turn our back, the enemy would have to deal with me, my cousins, my sisters, my brothers, because we all had each other's back. Amen. So it, anytime we went into battle, we, we had each other's back. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, it, you must know that the enemy is good at what he does. He, he, he steals, he kills, and he destroys. He tries to, well, the, the Bible says that he kills, he steals, and he destroys. And not only that, he also lies. He's the father of all lies. So when you're going through something, the enemy always will begin to lie to you. He will always make you think something uh, opposite of what you really going through. He, he will blow it up. He will magnify it and make it think it's, it's so bad. It's, it's, it's worse than, than what it really is. He begins to lie to you. And, and, and that's why you must 
have on the armor of God and you must stay in the word of God. And, and when you, if you need finances, you, you're going through a, a financial crisis, a storm where you need finances, go to the word of God and see what God says about your finances. What does God say about your, your, uh, your, uh, being wealthy and being prosperous? You must go to everything that you ever go through. It, it, there is a scripture for it in the word of God. Amen. I, I tell my kids all the time, there is a word in the word for everything that you go through but it's up to you to go to the word and search the scriptures and find out what God says about what you are going through amen amen that's why God, God admonishes us through his word to study our study to show ourselves approved amen we must study we must meditate on the word of God because the enemy is gonna he's gonna keep fighting he's gonna keep he's not gonna give up fighting us he's going to keep doing what he does best and that's that's try to discourage you and to try to intimidate you he uses the spirit of intimidation to intimidate you when you're going through something he tried like i said he he magnifies your situation and tries to make it appear to be worse than what it really is you must know the word of God when you're going through something, when you're going through a situation, circumstance. I don't care what it is. You must know the word of God. Amen. Amen. The enemy is always devising a plan of defeat against the believer. So you must know that if he's divide, he's always devising a plan of defeat, you must always be in the word of God. And I can't stress it enough how important it is to know the word of God. Even if, you know, people try to memorize scripture. But let me tell you something. When you are reading the word of God, the, a lot of people, you know, oh, I, I got to memorize this and I got to memorize that. The the uh, the key thing is to read it because and and invite the Holy Spirit into your time of reading. I've learned I learned that years ago. Before I begin to read read the Word of the Lord and meditate on it, I invite the presence of the Holy Spirit. And as you begin to read, the Holy Spirit begins to give you revelation and insight on what you're reading. And then, and I may not. I, I, I can just say for myself, I don't know. I know scriptures. I know a lot by memory, but I don't know all of the scripture by memory. Amen. But I tell you one thing, because I have read the word of God. As you read it, you are making a deposit into your spirit, man. So when you are faced with something, when your back is up against the wall, before you know it, you be the word of the Lord begin comes out of your mouth, and you and it you be like, where did that come from? It's because you have made the necessary deposit in your spirit. That's for somebody, and I'm, I'm sensing that somebody has, you know, oh, I read the word, but I can't memorize it. I can't memorize everything don't don't beat yourself up and and don't you know do that to yourself trying to memorize every scripture and what I used to do with my kids I in the mornings when they were younger and I do it even now when I go back home uh I I have little post-its and I put scriptures on the mirrors I put scriptures on the refrigerator and I used to have my children um, I used to uh, put a certain scripture on their bathroom mirrors, on my daughter's mirror, on my son's mirror. And by the end of the week, they would be quoting that scripture to me over and over and over again because the word of the Lord was in front of them. I put it between, you know, in the front of their eyes and I, I put it before them. And that's how my children learned, you know, the word of God, because I had it posted everywhere. I had it in their backpack. I, I gave them both Bibles. They had Bibles in their backpack. I would highlight scriptures for them to read. And I was talking to my daughter the other day and she said she, she goes at lunchtime and she sits in her car and she meditates and she reads the word of the Lord. And I, and I tell you, I was one proud mama because you know the bible says we are to train up our children in the way that they go so when they are older they would not depart from it and i know that she was dealing with some things on her job and she would go to her car and read her bible and that just blessed my soul and i would call you know uh god he, I'm real sensitive to when my children are going through something and I will call her up on lunch and get, Hey, read Psalm 35, read Psalm 37, read Psalm 51. And we would pray over the phone and I would put the situation in the scripture 
And she, I tell you, she has a, she has a powerful testimony about some things that happened on her job. Amen. But it blessed my soul that, you know, it let me know that I trained her up in the way that, you know, she should go. I trained her according to what the way God told me to train her, you know, with, because once our children leave what they call the nest or leave the home, you know, if you have not trained them up, I tell you, the the streets will train them, or the streets will try to train them, and and that's not to say that my children didn't vent, they ventured off, they ventured into things so, like I did. I ventured off. I was trained up in the word. My grandmother made sure, you know, I knew the word. She made sure. I did you read your Bible? Did you pray? But when I got older. I ventured off and and backslid, got into the world. But let me tell you, even when I was back in the world and I had backslid, and if I did something that was not, you know, in line with the word of God, a conviction would come over me. Amen. Amen. That wasn't a part of what I was going to teach tonight, but uh, the, the spirit had took me that way. And that was for somebody. That was for somebody. I know it was for somebody. So, you know, don't beat yourself up because you might not know the scriptures like somebody else might know the scripture. I have friends that know the scriptures back of their hand and back. They could quote a scripture. Uh, you snap a finger and they uh, say, well, where is this at? They could tell you right where it's at. Amen. But the thing of it is the 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 people that I know that are like that my own personal you know people that I know personally they know the scriptures but what I've seen when they get in a tight situation when they get in a jam they won't they won't quote the scripture and I had to tell a person the other day you know the word begin to speak the word to your situation in your circumstance and what you're going through and and they, they called me with a testimony the other day they were going through something they needed God to, uh, they needed something to manifest and it manifested when they begin to speak and declare the word of the Lord. Amen. God's word does not return void. That means once you speak it and you send it out, it's going to do whatever you tell it to do because it does not come back void. It's not like, you know, you writing a bad check and you know, it's a bad check. That bad check going to be, it's going to come back. Amen. The God's word don't come back like that. It goes out it accomplishes whatever you send it to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me just say, you know, the, the enemy is relentless. He, that means he, he does not give up fighting us, especially as a child of God. He, he will not give up. He is relentless. And what does that word relentless mean? It means steady and persistent. The enemy is steady and persistent and trying to discourage you by sending, you know, things towards you. Amen. So we, if he is relentless as a child of God, we must be relentless. Amen. We must be relentless in prayer. We must be relentless relentless in fasting. We must be relentless in praise. We must be relentless in worship. Amen. And like I said, that word relentless means steady and persistent. We must be persistent. We must not wait until we're going through something and then all of a sudden we want to pray or, you know, you, we must be relentless because the enemy is never going to stop. His job description is is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's seeking. He's roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. So he's he does not stop. He does not stop. He's persistent in trying to destroy us. He's persistent in, in trying to discourage us. He's persistent in trying to make us not be victorious, but too bad, too late, because the blood of Jesus has already been shed for us. We are victorious through Christ Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say amen with me? Amen. Amen. You know, and we, we have to know that the enemy is not going to stop attacking us as children of God. He's not going to stop. Amen. He he brings confusion and or God ordained relationships. He likes bringing confusion in the home. And he's got family members fighting one another against each other. He's he's fighting uh, individuals in the church, causing church strife. You know, in division. The enemy is not going to stop. Amen. He's not going to stop. So we must not stop praying. We must not stop speaking and declaring the word of God. We must not stop prophesying to our situation and our circumstances. Amen. 
Amen. And it also, sometimes it seems like uh, the enemies, it seems like his, um, his uh, attacks against us are perfectly timed sometimes. They, they, they're like tailor-made for us. And, and you know, that, that you, if you've ever worn a tailor-made suit, I've had a couple, they fit perfectly. They fit, you know, they're, they're made for you. And that's what the enemy does with attacks uh, against the people or the children of God. He tailor may make attacks to come against you to try to shut you down, to try to shut your mouth. And I know for a fact that I was going through something so uh, serious in my life. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to confess or declare the word of the Lord. I felt like I had no energy to do any of that. Amen. But and 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 then one day I I I I just said, Lord, give me your strength. I need your strength right now. And and I began to become strengthened. And and the Lord touched a couple of my friends. They called. They said, Lord, the Lord put you on our heart. Let's pray. And they would pray. And as they begin to pray, I begin I became strengthened because I was at a place in my life I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to fast. I didn't want to read the Word of God because I was going through so much. And that's what the enemy does. He will send. It seemed like you will get go from attack after attack after attack. He's trying to shut you down. He's trying to shut your mouth. Don't let the enemy shut your mouth. Amen. Amen. He beat you up one side and beat you down the other side. You must not. You must not let him you know, uh, shut you down like that. Amen. Our, our response, like I said, we must be relentless because he's relentless. We must be, we must be persistent in declaring and speaking the word of the Lord. We must be consistent and persistent and, and, and speaking the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just say that, you know, we spend so much time preparing for work, preparing for school, vacations, weddings, what have you, other activities. We, we spend so much time and emphasis on those type of things, but we don't spend enough time preparing for the onslaught attack from the enemy. We don't we don't spend we don't prepare ourselves for battle. It, we we get so caught up, like I said, we spend a lot of times and you know, beautifying ourselves, making ourselves look good, you know, weddings, um, vacations, work, you name it. But we don't prepare we don't prepare ourselves, you know, for the spiritual things. We don't prepare for, you know, for the battles that come and the attacks that come. And I believe it's because we don't see them with our natural eye. So we don't prepare for them. Amen. We must be ready. We must, we must study to show ourselves approved. We must be, you know, like I said, I can't stress this enough. We must be, be persistent in the spiritual things. We must be consistent in the spiritual things. Amen. Amen. When we, when we, uh, when it comes to preparing for battle, no, nobody thinks to prepare for it. But when, when it comes to preparation for battle, we are lazy. We are lazy. We get lazy. We get lethargic because we don't think that they're coming. And then when we're hit, we're blindsided. We don't, we didn't, they say, we don't, you didn't see it coming. That's because, you know, there, there was no preparation made. And when it, and when it comes, it throws you off kilter, you know, you, you, and you just, you just I, I watched somebody, she was going through something and she fell out in the middle of the floor. She was like, Lord, what am I going to do? And I told her to get up. I said, get up, let's open the word of God and let's be, let's search the scriptures. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to speak and declare the word of the Lord on this situation and on this circumstances. Amen. Amen. And see, when you don't prepare for battle, that's, uh, it results in constant defeat. You know, you, you, you de the enemy defeats you because you, you are not prepared and you know, you have not made preparations. You know, we are, we live in this world. We are not of this world. And, but because we live in this world, we're going to go through something. 
We're going to face mountains. We're going to face battles. We're going to go through storms. Amen. Amen. But we can't be lazy. We must be persistent. Amen. And when you are constantly lazy, you know, at night, oh, I'm so tired. I can't read the word of the Lord. But if a movie come on HBO or BET, you, you got a whole lot of energy to watch that movie when you should be reading and meditating on the word of the Lord. Amen. And when you're lazy, when the battle comes, you get worn out. You get worn out. And then, like I said, there's constant defeat. You become tired and you become lethargic. Amen. Amen. Let me just say, in the, back, I, I spoke about the Roman soldiers back, back in the biblical days. Uh, the, when a soldier would not dare think going into battle without, a, without its proper armor on. That when they went into battle, they were armed and they were considered dangerous. Are you armed? Are you considered dangerous? Are you dressed to kill? Amen. Amen. And if the, if the Roman soldiers went into battle, they knew that um, there, there, it meant certain death because they went into battle without their battle gear. They went into battle without their full armor that they, they fought in when they went into battle. Amen. And that's the same thing with us. You know, I said it early. We have no business venturing out into the world without putting on the whole armor of God. And, and, and I, I'm, I just want to stress how important it is every day, you know, every morning. There have been some mornings where I have missed. But when it comes to my mind, if I'm sitting at my desk or whether I'm driving, I put on that whole armor of God so that I can be able to stand against the wiles. What are the wiles? They are the schemes and the tactics of the enemy. Amen. So don't, don't think you can go into battle against the enemy without having on the full armor of God without having on your battle gear. Amen. Amen. And you must know that when you have on that gear, God protects us, but he requires us to have that, that battle gear on. Amen. He requires us to have the full armor of God. He can protect us without it, but the, God said, put on the full armor of God so that you are able to stand against. Amen. That you are able to stand against the enemy. Not, not your sister, not your brother, not your grandmother, you're not your grandfather, but you are able to stand against the enemy. Amen. The Bible declares that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God in pulling down strongholds. What are those weapons? The, uh, some of the weapons that I'm going to just give you a few. And I know, you know, the, what, what are some of those spiritual weapons that God has given us to employ? Praise. Let me tell you, when you begin to praise the Lord and praise the name of the Lord, it stops the enemy in his tracks. When you begin to praise and worship God, when you going through something, it, it, um, it impairs it, 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 um, what word am I looking for? It paralyzes the enemy. It stops him in his track because the enemy doesn't like when we praise and worship because what it does, it, it throws him off because it reminds him of who he used to be and what he used to be. See, we must understand that Satan was a worshiper. He was a worshiper. So, and he knows the power of worship and the effects of worship. So when, when you are going through something and you begin to worship the Lord in the midst of what you are going through, it, 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 it impairs him. It stops the enemy in his tracks. It paralyzes him. And not only does, does it do that, it confuses the enemy. When you begin to praise and worship God in the midst of what you're going through, it confuses the enemy because he's trying to figure out how are you able to praise and worship God and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of what you're going through. It confuses him and his demonic cohort. So you must remember, employ praise and worship when you are going through something. Amen. Another... um. A weapon, praying in the spirit. 
praying in tongues, when you begin to pray in your heavenly language, when you are going through something, it is not you that is praying, but it is the spirit of God on the inside of you that is praying. And see, the enemy can't understand when you are praying in the spirit. He don't know what you're praying and what you're saying. So that's why it's important that we pray in our heavenly language. God has given us that as a gift. And what, what sense does it make for somebody to give you a gift and you never open it? You never uh, see what that gift is. You never enjoy it. What, what What's the point of somebody giving you a gift and you never open it? Amen. God has given us the gift of tongues. And it's a powerful weapon because just like praise and worship, when the spirit of God is praying on the inside of us, he's praying in the heavenly language. And the enemy does not understand heavenly language. Amen. Glory to God. We must employ those weapons. Uh, and, and we must employ. God has given us his word. The Bible says that the word of the Lord is, is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts. It divides. Amen. When it's, I'm telling you, when you, the next time you find yourself going through something, employ these weapons and see what happens. Amen. Don't start complaining. Don't start gossiping. Don't start rehearsing over and over and over what you're going through. Begin to pray the word of the Lord. Worship. Praise God. Speak and, and pray in your heavenly language. Amen. And all of these, when you employ these spiritual weapons, the, it confuses the enemy. It confuses the enemy. And the enemy, he, I, I could even imagine the, the, the devil and his demons scratching their heads trying to figure out, I, I just did this to this person and it was devastating. How is this person still able to praise God? How is this person still able to, to uh, decree the word of the Lord? How is this person still able to pray in the spirit after what I just did to them? Amen. 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 Let me just say this. Without the armor, it becomes easy. For you to sin. It becomes easy for you to be tempted. And easily persuaded. Without the armor of God. In Romans chapter 7 verse 15. It reads the NIV. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do. I do not do. But what I hate I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I, myself, who do it, but it is the sin that is living on the inside of me. And what, like I said, without that armor, it's easy for you to sin. It's easy for you to be tempted. And, and the enemy begin to put thoughts in your mind and... Romans 7 15 verse 17 basically what that is saying is is when you do what you don't want to do but that what you know to do you don't do what's what's wrong what's going on it's you it's the members on the inside of you that that is warring against each other amen and a lot of times that happens when you're going through something you try to uh, find an easy way out you try out of desperation you know uh, you tend to do things that you know you would not do when you're going through something. Put on the full armor of God, people. You must must employ, uh, you must put on the full armor of God and you must employ the spiritual weapons that God has given you. Amen. Amen. Let me say, when storms come, you have to call on Jesus. You you can call on Jesus. When storms come. In that passage, Matthew chapter 8, the disciples, when the storm came, they 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 became frustrated. They 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 um did they took their eyes off, they, they began to focus on the storm. But Jesus calmly got up, he spoke to the storm, and there was a calm. Amen. So I want to say, be strong in God, don't faint, don't give up. 
the storm clouds are passing and the sun will shine again. Amen. I, I want to encourage you while you're going through, don't give up. Don't sink. Don't complain. L look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. There's more to this. Maybe I'll continue on next week. Uh, we're all going through something, but you must know that you have the authority to speak to your storms, to speak to your situations. Amen. God bless you all. Until next time, may the love of the Lord, I love you with the love of the Lord, and, and may God's grace and mercy continuously be with you, and may goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Amen. God bless you all.